All right, students, welcome back. We're going to talk about the last part of uh, sprites in this video segment. It's hopefully going to be one of the shorter ones. We'll see how lucky we are. So the purpose of this is we're going to talk about how to rip something from the Internet, namely rip a sprite sheet. Maybe you want to uh, try something that's already out there, and you want maybe to have a couple different frames that somebody's already put together, and uh, you want some nice animation that's going to look like that. Uh, the point is that you can actually use uh, animations and images that somebody else has already created. It kind of makes your game look a little nice. Now when it comes time to actually produce and sell your game, you want to make your own sprites. But maybe for a quick, uh, some quick effects and some trial and error, you want to see uh, what it's going to look like using maybe a Mario. You can make a little Mario fan game or something like that. So we're going to start and do that, basically create that Mario sprite image right there. So I'm going to just click on New, uh, Create Sprite. I'm going to call this SPR. Maybe I'll make this uh, Mario 2 or whatever. And I'll say Edit Sprite. Of course, I don't have anything right there. At this point, what I'm going to do is go over to Google and maybe uh, type in Mario Sprite Sheet. So a sprite sheet is where somebody has gone and uh, made just a sheet of sprites. And if you're lucky, they are equidistant from each other, which makes your life a lot easier. So uh, we'll go through here. I think the one that I chose was down here, was this one right here. We can choose, you know, there's lots of Mario sprite sheets that you can see from all the different Mario games. We'll try to find one that looks pretty interesting. Oh, I don't know. This this one seems fine right here. Just the, your generic. The problem with this one is if I look at it, it's 255 by 148, I guess. That might be about the best that I'm going to get. Here we have 389. And he's facing and spinning around. This one's not too bad. If the, let's try this one right here. So I'm just going to right click and uh, save this image. So save image as. I'm just going to throw this on my desktop. I'm going to call it uh, Mario Sheet 2. So there it is. I'm going to go over here and I can go edit. And the, within my sprite editor, I can say create from a strip. So I can create my image from a strip. And I'm going to go down here Mario Sheet 2. Perfect. There it is. I click on open. And if you look here, I've got uh, those images, and this little rectangle is going to uh, allow me just to clip any one of those uh, from the image. What's interesting, though, is I can actually say, hey, I don't want just, just one image. Maybe I want two, or maybe I want four, okay? And then I can put this, uh, this little clips anywhere that I want. In this case... Let's see here. You know, I kind of like, ooh, I really like the, the flying Mario with this cape here from uh, Super Mario World. Um, the problem is this says images per row. Let's see if I want all four of those, but there needs to be four in a row. So that's going to kick it out to the side right there. And then I'll try to line it up. And then you can just adjust these uh, parameters to try to fit everything in properly. Now, one of the things at this point that I'm noticing is that this is getting really, this is really small. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. So, what I might do uh, temporarily is I might just expand this sprite sheet just for the this demonstration purposes. Okay, so obviously I clicked on that and it grabbed those four images. It wasn't really what I wanted. I could uh, open up, create from a file. Maybe I'll click on that sprite sheet too, and I'll open it up. Now there's there's all of those images all there, but it's that's still just one image. That's not really what I want. One thing I could do, if you remember, I can uh, stretch this to maybe 300 uh, percent. I'm trying to have excellent. Now if we look there, it's going to be pixelated. There's no way you can really avoid that. But then I'm going to say I'm going to save this. I've just modified this image. I'm going to save this as a pink file. And we're getting run into a little bit of difficulty here. I'm not sure what's going on. Hmm. 
Okay, not sure exactly what happened there, but we've got this loaded up again. We're going to save this under desktop. We're going to save this SPR Mario 2 big. So we can mess with this later. This is also another technique you can use to enlarge files if you want to pull from them later. Okay, so uh, I've saved this on the desktop as a bigger image file. So now I'm going to create from the strip and I'm going to find Mario Sprite Sheet SPR Mario 2 big. I'm going to open this up. And here we go. This is a little bit bigger. It's a little bit easier for us to pull from. So I'm going to say there's four images. Four images per row. I'm going to put this right here. Uh, the image width, right now it's saying 32 pixels. Well, it's easily maybe more than double that. So 100. Yeah, that seems... Well, that first one is, is less than 100. So here's where you start playing the fun game here. So image height, let's, it's 32, let's make that 100. Nope, needs to make that image height a little bit harder. Let's make it 200. Nope, that's too much. So 150, yeah, that's still a little too much. Let's try 120. No, because we are not getting that down there, getting his nose. 140, too much. 130. Okay, I think that's reasonable. If you look as I click around here and as I move this, uh, what changes is the top left corner, okay, where this uh, these four frames are going to snag from. And that is the horizontal pixel offset and vertical pixel offset. So if you look at these two numbers right here, as I move this box around the room, those two those numbers are changing. And so when I finally get it somewhere around where I like it, then uh, you can uh, change these a little bit manually. So I can say 120. Whoops. And at that point, we look and say, okay, this is this is really not what we want. Uh, we need to create from the strip. Mario, I hit uh, enter too soon. So it looks like we need to make the width a little bit wider. Image width, let's try 150. If I make it 150, now we'll run into a little bit of a problem because it looks like this one, this first image, is rather thin and then these other images are thicker so I can it fits perfectly inside this box uh, so let's make it back to 110 if I do that I've got equal so I've got everything centered on both sides here for this first image that one's great but then if you look over here the whole image is is wider so I, I, I can try to maybe make it 140 and center it a little bit better but now this one is a little bit forward and so what we have here is these sprites aren't completely equally spaced it looks like even if I do maybe if I put it right there at the beginning this and I pull this line if I make the image width shorter like 100 it ends there but then you can see that it works fine for this one but then those other two get get cut so maybe choosing this one with a cape wasn't the best, but if I go up here, things might be a little bit better. Mario uh, running with the cape. I can't have a uh, start off at zero. And here we've got a little bit of area. Here we're totally in. So I might make the width, uh, change the width to maybe 120. And so I've got him there got them about there. It's about the same on each one of them. That's actually pretty good. And what we'll be able to do later on is just chop off that end white part. So that's pretty good for right now. It's, it's difficult to find sprite sheets online that are equally spaced, but even if you had to manually clip it and then do some uh, editing with the other tools that we already used, it's definitely a possibility. At this point, we can see everything's looking pretty good. If I even do go to show preview all of a sudden, it, that it's not too bad at all. We could He's at the same height in all of these. So let's go ahead and crop this with a border size of zero. And nothing's going to happen. All right, that makes sense because uh, th there's the white all in each one of these. So I'll double click on this one, zoom in, use the maybe the magic wand there, and I'll hit delete to get rid of that. Go to the next frame, hit delete to get rid of the white. 
delete to get rid of the white. And, oh, I think I missed one of them. There we go, missed that one. Delete to get rid of the white. Hit OK. Okay, we've got a Mario moving along, running to the left, looking pretty good. Let's see if we can uh, crop it down a little bit. Perfect. Hey, this is looking out, turned out a lot better than I thought. If we wanted to uh, transform it back, then we could. If we wanted to make it smaller, we could say, uh, let's make it a 50%. And I don't know about that. That seems a little bit too small. We can, I don't know. Mario, like that size, seems pretty good for our purposes. And uh, he's got four images, uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. He seems to be doing some pretty good stuff. I'll put the... I might make his sprite origin right down there at his feet. We can see how that compares in each one of these images. Sure, that's fine. That'll work. And then just to complete things out, I might click on Create Object and say OBJ underscore Mario 2. And click on that. I might add an event, say... Uh, well, let's say I'm not going to add any events at all. I'm just going to drop them in the room and see what happens. So, objects, Mario 2, right there. I think when I was testing this earlier, we had a, that other Mario. So we'll see if, which Mario looks better from a standpoint here. And there we go. There's Mario with his cape running to the left with his arms out. Um, Here's my other Mario. I have him. Uh, his animation is only taking effect whenever I'm holding down the left mouse button. So, uh-oh, watch out, Mario. Mario is passing you. You say, well, how did you get that to animate? Because this image over here, it's constantly cycling through that sprite, even though I really don't want it to. Uh, let me show you how I did that with this Mario over here. So, I'll implement that with this Mario 2 guy. So, if I'm going to add event create and I'm going to drop in a little bit of code here and what we can do is uh, we can manipulate the image speed and I'm going to set it to zero whenever he is created so that if I just leave it like that and I run my game then whenever that Mario with the cape is created it is not going to cycle through uh, his animation. You can see he's just kind of hanging out right there. And so if I, w of course in a real platformer game or something like that, you ha want to have a sprite that was having him stand still. But for this purpose right here, this is going to be good enough for us. And then we can say Mario 2, let's say whenever you have a key press, uh, or maybe, yeah, just key press, we'll say, if I hit the left button, then I'm going to drag in some code that says image underscore speed equals 1. So it's going to change the speed. And I'm going to set his X position equal to his current X position minus 5. Essentially moving him 5 pixels to the left. Although 5 is a little much. I might say maybe 3 for a little bit smoother transition. And then when I release the left mouse button, so key release left. I'm going to set the image speed back to zero. And we'll see what happens with this. So there he is. I press the left mouse button and as long as I push it he is his animation is going. Uh, there's a difference between this one and the other one. I'll show you what that difference is in a second. But you can see every time I lift up the keyboard, I'll try to hit hard or hard. He moves to the left and the animation goes. Now you say, well, why isn't that going on with this guy down here? Because this other Mario that you made earlier, uh, we didn't see how that was made. He's, he's moving all the way across the screen the whole time. And I'll show you how that happens, what the difference is. With the Mario that we just utilized right here, we have utilized the event, uh, the key press, which even though I hold down the button, it's just going to register one event. Same thing for key release. When I, as soon as I release, it's going to measure, uh, it's going to count that as one event. If we go over here to this other object Mario, you can see I have this keyboard left. 
I have clicked on keyboard and then hit the left arrow key. So that means when I, as long as I'm holding down the left arrow key, it's going to go fire, 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 or in this case, left, 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 left. And I think the code here is still the same. I said x equals x minus 3, and image speed is 0.5. I made it half the speed. That's fine. So if I go back here to my Mario 2, I can right-click on this event and change it from a key press to a keyboard left in this release, I think I used just the regular release for that one, release press, yeah, oh, release on the keyboard. So we'll go to Mario 2, yeah, that's the same thing. So if we run this now, both Marios should act the same way. And you say, well, what if we went to turn around the other way and stuff like that? Well, you can figure that out later. So there we go, both Marios running, obviously the one with the cape uh, moving to 5. I wish I could move them to the right, but I'd have to add some some instructions for that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. We talked about uh, how to rip a sprite from a sprite sheet. If you remember the way that we did that was when, after we created our new sprite, we just went up here to File, Create from Strip, and that strip I had downloaded from uh, the internet. And there's lots of good resources and you can come up with some really uh, cool animations that uh, benefit from other people's hard work on their sprites. Ha ha! and uh, get some neat uh, things going on with your game very quickly without a whole lot of effort on your part. So, all right. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.